a lawsuit against JetBlue involving Abraham Lunger, an Orthodox Jewish passenger, sheds lights on a disturbing display of closed-mindedness. Lunger's refusal to sit next to a woman solely based on his religious beliefs resulted in his expulsion from the flight. His uncompromising stance highlights a rigid adherence to outdated principles at the expense of common decency. This incident under underscores the challenges airlines face when passengers prioritize their beliefs over the convenience and comfort of fellow travelers. And it serves as a stark reminder of the intolerance that still persists today in society, even in seemingly trivial situations like airplane seating arrangements. This story is from Business Insider by Grace Dean on March 12th, 2024. And I'm I'm sure my fellow panelists are going to have plenty to say about this. This is just like a this is the low hanging fruit, proverbially. And so, but before we do, I just want to point out a few things here. Um, there is more to the lawsuit than just that particular uh, part of it. They're they're also alleging that the airline was mistreating them both during the incident and afterwards. So there were some other claims made by the. Uh, um, by the accuser, uh, they were told they, they're according to them, they were told that they could ask around to see if anyone would switch. Uh, the flight attendant apparently yelled at them to return to their seat uh, and then wouldn't let them switch, even though other passengers were saying that they would be willing to switch. Uh, and then the pilot came out and said that they was refusing to let them switch and that they would have to get off the plane. And so they got off the plane. Uh, apparently they weren't allowed to collect their luggage uh, and then they had to pay for the price difference for uh, a flight for the next day uh, and they even had to, they were charged a ticket change fee so there was more than just the uh, just the seating arrangement um, obviously that's a ridiculous expectation clearly sexist and really actually kind of creepy um, but there's good ways to deal with those kind of things, and there's bad ways to deal with those kind of things. So if we're assuming that all of those details from the story were correct, because really we're only hearing one side of the story, the airline itself didn't didn't have any lengthy statement about this, um, probably because you know it's an on, it's an ongoing case. But um, I don't know. I'm kind of leaning towards the passenger should probably win. It sounds like they were kind of mistreated after the fact. Um, and but it wouldn't be necessarily be because of uh, religious intolerance. It was just because of the way they were treated afterwards. Having said that, having said that, I do have to say that I think um, it can make good business sense for for airlines and businesses in general to uh, have certain a, a certain level of accommodation if it can be done fairly and consistently. For example, uh, I'm a teacher in the school that I work at. Um, we, we generally go go out of our way or put it put some effort into uh, to accommodate students that have religious holidays and things like that. And we're asked to work with the students and so forth. And my approach being an atheist, my approach to this in the past has been to I kind of work a little flexibility into the system. OK, instead of instead of saying, well, you can take this holiday because, you know, because you have a religious holiday. I just give everybody, you know, you can you can have one flex day or things like that. There are certain things that you can do to to accommodate not to kind of uh, accommodate what I like to call preference requests. OK, and, and I think that's really the the way to approach these kind of things. I, I don't like the idea of of going out of your way to to accommodate a religious request. But I do think that that falls within uh, a category of types of requests. Maybe somebody um, wanted to sit by the window or maybe, um, you know, somebody needed to sit near the bathroom because they're not feeling well. Or maybe somebody didn't want to sit next to a particular person because of their, uh, you know, because of their religious, well, because of their religious bigotry, basically. Um, but I, you know, I would categorize all those into kind of like a preference style requests. And I think that they can be addressed and they can be treated uh, uh, fairly and consistently. You can already, uh, in many airlines, you can specify where you know where you want when you buy your ticket you can say where you want to sit and so there are, there is some of that flexibility worked in uh infidel what what are your thoughts on that what how, how do what was your take here it's funny you mentioned that because a while back my son flew jet blue and said he would never do it again because they nickel and dimed everything and one of those things that they do nickel and dime though is the fact if you want to choose which seat you sit in you can pay the fee so at the end of the day this guy had every opportunity 
to avoid sitting next to some dangerous uh. worldly woman who could have tempted him into something <laughs> by just choosing to pay the extra money and sitting next to his wife who was actually on the flight or the other gentleman that was with him as well. So for that, uh, I feel that th their ex expectation of accommodation seems more of an, an idea of privilege than actual need because it's a fabricated need. They could have avoided this by paying the money. I also found it interesting, though, that it's JetBlue because one of the uh, heirs, uh, beneficiaries of JetBlue is one of these trad wife people. So I would expect the company to look rather positive towards these closed-minded behaviors. You know, they, they promote something and, and that's pretty much akin to this idea, you know, along with people like Mike Pence, who, is, you know, can't go to dinner with a woman unless his wife's there or someone else is there to, to chaperone him. But really, for me, what I find most disgusting about it is it really feels like a built in excuse for bad behavior for men, because if you can't control yourself sitting on a plane, sitting next to some woman, then, then that's a problem you have, not the airline and, and not the woman. Uh, you know, we, 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 we mentioned not too long ago, we discussed a, a story about a pastor who excused rape because of a woman wearing shorts. And I just find that this type of mentality is, is, is all just wound up together. And when it comes down to the flight attendant getting upset and, and yelling at them, well, I, I don't know how that was. We weren't there. But I will say that the last time I was on a flight, to think about somebody just standing there mildly in the in the middle of the, in the this big, wide, okay, not so wide aisle, saying just politely standing there because they couldn't sit next to the woman who was in the seat next to them, that, that just seems so disingenuous because it's not like we can, you know, we're too deep. I mean, two people walking past on those aisles is tight enough already. So it, just the mere act of standing there with, you know, with your thumb up your ass in, in the middle of the aisle, I can understand why an overworked flight attendant would say, hey, come on, sit down. Let, let's get this going. Uh, does it excuse bad behavior? No. But is it, do I understand that? Yes, because look, just sit down and fly, fly where you want to go or pay the fee. But, you know, I, I could go on with this forever, so I should probably not. And with that in mind, Richard, what do you think about this? Well, you said something that I that I was not aware of. Maybe I missed it about the, the guy's wife was on there with him. Obviously, yeah, they should have booked those together with with him next to the window and her in the middle or, some, you know, some way. Yes. But why didn't the wife switch with him and sit next to the woman and he go to the back to the other seat unless there was also a woman there? That's just, you know, there's a lot of facts here that my uh, legal background tells me I can't I can't decide who's right or wrong without really seeing the evidence or taking a deposition or two. I mean, it's these are these are he said, she said, they said kind of stories, which, you know, until you get people under oath and find out what's really going on, you're probably not going to know exactly. Mm -hmm. But what what's at the bottom of this that that bothers me that, you know, this kind of thinking is still going on is it's basically early biblical patriarchy. I mean, that's what it is. Over 2000 years, this has been going on and these people still think the same way. I mean, aren't they ever going to move along with history and, and the advancements of science and the fact they're on an airplane? I mean, they didn't have airplanes when when those rules were made back in four or five hundred, you know, B.C. or whatever. So it just it, it I don't know. I mean, we we We've got to work toward figuring out to how to change things. The problem is a lot of these people that think that way, you know, they indoctrinate their kids to think the same way. And the only way we're going to get our society to be better is to get their kids and our kids to have the ability to ask questions and investigate and, you know, have an open mind and see what's out there uh, without, you know, being, you know, how would I put it, uh, impeded with dogmatic blinders. Yeah. So, oh, no. uh, Jason, I'm sure you've got something to say. No, you know, I, I do agree with you. You know, that's one thing that really stood out to me on the fact that, you know, it does feel like a double edged sword. He said, she said type of thing. But, you know, what really made me think about this is funny because half my family is Jewish, you know. So I think about this. One of my best buddies that I train with is a very devout Jew. 
but you know, we spar together and we actually, you know, we talk a lot. This is a very old friend of mine, family friend of mine, but you know, so, so here, here's what I'm saying. Here's a scenario. So if a person who happens to be a member of, let's say an obscure religious belief system, uh, you know, let's say doesn't allow them to sit next to black people cause this type of problem on an airplane, would they be given this type of gravitas? Would they, would anybody even really care? Would we even be having this conversation? So I'm saying, you know, I feel like this article may even be a little politically loaded given the current state of affairs in our world. It's just, it, it really, it fucking blows my mind that blatant sexism is given any form of consideration when it is upheld by a religious belief, especially that of, you know, like what everyone said, it's like an archaic ancient religion. It's, and because of the nature of it, especially being in a Christian nation, it's given a special pass. And again, I say this as a person who has a Jewish last name, half my family is Jewish. Like I said, very close friends are Jewish. Um, I just, but the thing is like, if he were to act that way, or if any of my family members were to act this way, I, I'd, I'd be pissed. And I, I'd actually strongly question my relationship with him. Uh, I, I don't, I have to disagree with, with, with maybe disagree with Scott. And I'm going to shoot it back to you after this. So I want to see your take on it. Um, I, I just, I don't think people should be given special accommodations when those accommodations involve xenophobia and bigotry and racism and yeah. sexism. It's like tough fucking luck, man. Like this is a woman. This is a black person. This is a white person. This is a person from a different country. Your religion says you can't sit next to them in a fucking airport or in a, or in, or in a public place. I, tough shit. It's like, Richard, this is a modern world. You, you chose to go on the pl flight. You didn't spend the extra $15 to get a seat next to the woman that you choose to be with you, you there's a lot of things you could do but instead of doing those things you fucking impose your bullshit on other people and then blame them if anything it's just it, it's just gaslighting or borderline type behavior and it and then is justified by patriarchal fucking archaic bullshit like what infidel brought up i don't know i have a big problem with this i have i don't have a problem with people believing in religions but whenever your religion starts imposing on other people and, and uh, th that's a problem. And I don't think any accommodation should be made for that because at that point you're just accommodating bigotry and we're moved, we're taking two steps forward and four steps backwards. Scott, I'm gonna throw it back to you, man. I'd like for you to maybe clarify or, or, you yeah, know, no, comment yeah, on what I said. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Um, I, 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 I agree with you and kind of disagree in, in okay. the same, in the same respect. Um, Great. I, I think that um, I do agree that accommodations shouldn't be given because of those particular reasons, you know, because they're saying, well, my religion says I can't sit next to a woman. Clearly, that's ridiculous. Uh, I think mm -hmm. I think for an for an airline to go out of its way. Well, let me let me rephrase that for there to be expectations of the other passengers to accommodate that thing, I think is going too far. I think up to a point, though, uh, airlines can accommodate for any number of requests. Um, like I mentioned before, like um, I I do some of this in, in my teaching and the mm -hmm. way I like to do it is I'll, I'll give you opportunity. May, like if I was running the air, airline, maybe I would say I'll give you an opportunity to switch your seat or to select your seat. I, I wasn't aware that JetBlue had the option to um, to you know pay the extra fee to to, mm -hmm. to choose your seat. But up to a point, you can choose. your. I don't care the reason. I don't care the reason. It could be because of your religion. That's fine. That's your decision. It be could be because you're you're not feeling well that's your decision it could be maybe you just don't want to sit by your friend you know whatever the reason up to a certain point um i think accommodation is, can be reasonable uh, but like i said when when you start infringing on the other passengers when you start when you start expecting i think it was infidel you said something about privilege right and and so if you mm -hmm. start expecting that people will accommodate you just because it's your religion then I would definitely agree that that's, that's too far and that's unreasonable expectation. Speaking of that, I wanna ask a question of the, uh, uh, of the panel here. If you were on that plane, I wanna ask you, would you trade seats with somebody on a plane if somebody asked you and they specified it was because of their religion? Now, you might wanna say yes, because you're just showing kindness to a fellow passenger. You might wanna say no, because maybe you feel it's an appropriate way for you to protest against those religious demands and accommodations, would you change seats? Let's say you're traveling alone. Let's say you have no other requirements on, on sitting at a particular spot. Would you do it? Infidel, what do you think? Would you change seats if somebody asked you to? 
Well, I'll give you the short answer because the long answer would not be appropriate for you to <laughs> know. Not at all. And, and it does go back to what I feel comes across as a sense of smug su moral superiority because their morals are telling them or their, their professed morals is telling them that they can't sit next to this other person. And mm -hmm. if this was a discussion we were having of someone saying, I can't sit next to that guy over there because he's an Orthodox Jew, I'd be slamming them too for bigotry because that's just as unacceptable. And with that expectation, and, and I think that they would be offended if someone said that about them and rightly so. And on the flip side, I think that they should give that same expectation to other people, whether they're women or people of color or whatever reason of, of, of a new bigoted nuance. Uh, I, me personally, no, I, I, I would have absolutely no problem in uh, generously laughing in their face and saying, <laughs> move along. But Richard, what about you? Oh, would, you, you, would, you, would you change your seat if somebody said, please change my seat? My religion requires that I can't sit by a woman. Uh, I guess it would all depend on the circumstances, the way the person's tone of voice was, how they looked, you know, and, and if, and if, you know, you said we're alone, I would say if, if I was with my wife, I would say, no, I'm staying uh -huh. here. But I have done that for people on a plane, but, but they didn't actually say religious. It was, they needed to be next to their kids. So I said, fine, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, I'm, I'm an easygoing guy, as long as you're not stepping on my toes. So I'm probably, you know, would say, let, but I might have, I might have commented about it. You know, I might, I might, I might have said, sure, but you know, it's pretty weird that you can't sit there. Um, so I don't know. I'd, I, it's hard to say without being there, if you know what I mean. Right. Right. Yeah. No, I, 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 I agree, kinda, but I don't know. This just reminds me of some back of the bus shit. It really mm -hmm. does. Yeah. I, I, well, I, I have to agree yeah. with Infidel. This is just like. This is, you know, women sit on one side, men sit on the other, back of the bus, you're below me, I'm above you, I get to do this, I get to impede on everybody else's shit to do my shit. I know, fuck them, man. Again, I cannot separate it from any other form of bigotry, xenophobia, just because it's allowed and acceptable and we're used to it, we give some kind of fucking exception for it. I, I just can't, I can't get with it. To me, it's just the same way as treating a person of color. I don't know, I've been treated that way, I'm covered in tattoos and it's 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 I've, you know so you know i've definitely now luckily nowadays people are a lot more used to it but 15 years ago you know a little, little different so I, i've definitely been treated that way and uh you know fuck people who treat me that way and fuck people who treat anybody else that way i don't want anything to do with them and i'm not going to accommodate them would you answer that way would you say fuck of course, that i already have do i do it all the time man. <laughs> I, I have no problem awesome. being confrontational all right. public all right that's no cool. problem it's 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 you should talk to my poor partner and my poor kid i get strangely mm -hmm. confrontational when i feel like people are acting yeah just don't bring me around abortion protesters yeah i, I don't know just it's one of those things so yeah okay all right cool great answers let's try another question here um, so how does this compare contrast to other situations where uh, individuals are making requests and possibly being denied? For example, if a gay couple wants to buy a wedding cake, okay, different situation, but, but are there any contrast there? Is, are we going to have a rule of inclusiveness? What are the important differences here? And Fidel, what are your thoughts on that? For me, it, it, it's rather simple. First, as you mentioned earlier, there's no rule in the Bible about where you sit on an airplane or where you do or don't make a cake. So when, whenever they use biblical excuses to rationalize bad behavior, to me, uh, what they're doing is they're just retrofitting their own bigotry into a little box that they can say, oh, this is, this is why I feel this way. So for me, I, I feel that when you start closing doors like that, uh, I think that's something that I'm not willing to tolerate. I have no interest in being part of, and I have no interest in enabling people who do. Richard, how about you? What is How, how would this compare to the situation with a gay couple wanting to buy a wedding cake? Well, I'll give you a, a slightly different example. Um, I mean, I, I, I think that's a real problem. I'm very familiar with the Supreme Court case that had that happen and huh. found it very uh, uncomfortable. I, I live about a mile and a half away from a Hobby Lobby, and I drive by there all the time. And I, every time I do, I, I 
not nice words go through my head. Yep. So in any case, yeah, I mean, I just think, I think most people live about a mile and a half away from <laughs> Hobby Lab. <laughs> Unfortunately, yeah, isn't that fun? Yeah. Um, yeah. No, I, I just my whole thought is like with, with what Infidel and, and Jason were and everybody saying, you know, we need to have a situation where you treat people as if they're all the same, equal rights. Everybody should be, you know, unless they're doing something harming you or harming mm-hmm. somebody else, leave them alone. And if, if they want to buy a cake from you or if they need a wedding dress, I mean, if you're open for business, you need to be open for business for everybody. It's yeah. just that simple. Yeah. yeah. And I agree. I agree. I, I just, you know, I won't take it too much time with this. And, and look, it's, it, I don't know if it's a spicy take. I have no problem with assholes making private clubs where assholes pay to be part of the asshole club. And they do asshole shit. And everybody knows this is where the assholes go and do asshole shit. That's okay. But if it's open to the public and we enable this type of bi- bullshit and bigotry, all we're doing is being traitors to America. I mean, if, if Americans who are citizens paying taxes, putting back into the system are not given equal opportunity, not equal outcome, but at least equal opportunity, equal rights, equal access to health care, blah, 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 and treated fairly then what you're doing is being a fucking traitor. Your, 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 your behaviors are treasonous and your, your impact and place in society should be evalu- reevaluated. So that, that's how I feel about that shit. All right. All right. Well, any last, uh, any last words before we wrap this one up here? Infidel? Yeah, I, I agree entirely because I think that oftentimes we put a veneer of tolerance upon things. And really what we're talking about is enabling. And yep. as mm-hmm. long as we pass a blind eye to things what we're doing is just allowing these things to be perpetuated i agree 100 percent, 100 fucking yeah i i yeah that's a great way to put it it's like uh disguising uh bigotry and enabling in the form in the guise of tolerance kind of like a wolf in sheep's clothing kind of set up there mm-hmm. um yeah good point good point and we had a great conversation here great conversation if you would like to continue this conversation check out our fan run facebook groups we also have a fan run Discord server at tiny.cc slash ACA Discord. Nope, my mistake. Sorry, nope. That was tiny.cc slash ACD Discord. Jason, I keep mixing up my ACAs and my ACDs. It's all right, man. <laughs> we'll, we'll forgive you eventually. Uh, uh, let me repeat that. I keep mixing up my ACAs and my ACDs. C. D, oh, D's nuts. All right. So uh, there we I was go. going to do it. I, I mean, I, I, you left them hanging out for me, but I you know, get up there. I understand <laughs> you've been on the show for a while. You're a little rusty, but uh, if you want to see more dropped jokes, <laughs> click oh. these links. <laughs>